the if-then-else statement. The simplest branching statement is if. An if statement says, if a particular condition is true, then execute the statement. Otherwise, skip it. The condition is a Boolean expression. An expression is a statement that evaluates to a value. A Boolean expression evaluates to either true or false. Now, here's the formal syntax of an if statement. Now then, let's take a look at how to make a decision using the if statement. Create a new Windows Form application and name it as if. Add a button control and set its name property to btnif and then set its text property to if. Now then, double click the button control and paste this code in its click event. Finally, run the application by, of course, pressing F5. Now, click the IF button and you'll see the message box looking such as this. Let's discuss how this works. First, we are declaring an integer variable called INT number and setting its value to 15, all in the same line of code over here. Then we use an IF THEN statement to determine what we should do next. In this case, we are saying that if INT number is equal to 15, if it's true, then this block of code will be executed and the message will be displayed. We end the code block with end if. Else statement. If you want to run one piece of code if the condition is true and another piece if the condition is false, then you use the else statement. Let's work with the sample. Return to the code editor in this simple if project and modify the code in its click procedure. Now run the application by pressing the F5 button. As you click the button control, you will see an output something like this. Now let's see how this works. The code following the else statement runs if the condition in the if statement is not met. In this case, the value of the INT number is 15, but the condition being tested for is INT number equals 500. So then the condition is tested to be false, so the else part of the code will be executed, and the message INT number is not 500 will be displayed. Select case. A select case structure is similar to an if then else if structure, but it's more efficient when the branching depends on one key variable or test case. You can also use select case structures to make your program code more readable. The syntax for a select case structure will look like this. A select case structure begins with the select case keywords and ends with the end select keywords. We have to replace variable with the variable, property or other expression that is to be the key value or test case for the structure. We have to replace value 1, value 2 and value 3 with numbers, strings or other values related to the test case being considered. If one of the values matches the variable, the statements below the case clause are executed and then Visual Basic jumps to the line after the end select statement and picks up execution there. Let's work with a sample. Create a new Windows Forms application and name it Select Case. As the form loads, set the text property of the form to Select Case. From the toolbox, drag and drop a list box control to the form and set its property name to first data, its doc property to fill, and its integral height property to false. With first data selected in the form designer, look at the properties window and select the items property. Click the ellipses button to the right of the property, and in the string collection editor that appears, add the five names on separate lines like this. After adding five names to the list box, click OK to save your changes. Now, double-click the list box control and in its event handler, paste this code. Now, run the application by hitting the F5 key. Whenever you click one of the names, a message box will appear by displaying a message like this. Now, let's explore how this works. In this first code snippet, we are declaring our variables. In this line of snippets, we are selecting the names. 
The items collection of the list box class returns an object data type, so we use the toString method to convert the object to a string data type for the str name variable. We are then starting a select case, n select block. To do this, we need to supply the variable that we're matching against. In this case, we're using the name that was selected in the list. Inside the select case n select block, we define separate case statements for each condition to be checked against. In this case, we have five, and each one is set to respond to a different name. If a match was found, Visual Basic executes the code immediately following the relevant case statement. That means if we click John, the message box would display Daisy Blue as his favorite color because Visual Basic 2008 would execute the line STR favorite color equals Daisy Blue. If we select Morris, the message box would display black as his favorite color because the Visual Basic would execute STR favorite color equals black. After the select case and select block, we display a message box to display the output over here in this section. The case else statement. So what happens if none of the case statements that we have included are matched? Under this circumstance, Visual Basic jumps to the else part and executes that part of the statement if no match were found. The syntax for select case else structure will look like this. The case statement will test whether any of the three values, one, two, or three respectively, matches the variables. If none of the values matches the variable, the else part of the statement will then be executed, and then Visual Basic jumps to the line after the end select statement and picks up execution there. Let's work with a sample. Let's use the same select case program. Return to the forms designer, locate the items property for the list box and then open the string collection editor again. Add another name in all uppercase letters to the collection and then click the OK button. Now open the code editor window and replace this code in its event handler. Now run the application by pressing the F5 key. As we click the last name that we just added, you'll see results similar to this, saying that I don't know this person's gender. Now let's discuss how this works. The case else statement is used if none of the other supplied case statements match what we're looking for. There is not a case sam defined within the block. So the switch statement redirects this to the case else statement. And then the instance displays a message box indicating that we do not know the gender of the person who's been selected. For next loop, with a for next loop, you can execute a specific group of program statements a set number of times in an event procedure or a code module. A for next loop is really just a shorthand way of writing out a long list of program statements. Because each group of statements in such a list does essentially the same thing, you can define just one group of statements and request that it be executed as many times as you like. The syntax for a for next loop looks like this. In this syntax statement, for, to, and next are required keywords, as is the equal to the operator. You have to replace the variable with the name of a numeric variable that keeps track of the current loop count. The variable after next is optional. And we replace start and end with numeric values, representing the starting and stopping points for the loop. The line or lines between the for and next statements are the instructions that are repeated each time the loop is executed. Let's work with the for next loop statement. Create a new Windows form application and name it loop. Add a list box and a button control to the form. Change the name property on the list box to first data and its integral height property to false. Change the name property of the button to btm for next loop. Also, set its text property to for next loop. Arrange the controls so that your form should look like this. Now double click the button control and paste this code in its click event. Then 
Paste this code snippet in the code designer to create the clear method. Finally, you run the application by hitting the F5 key. As you click the For Next button, you'll receive an output like this. Now then, let's explore how this works out. First, here in this line, we're defining the variable int count as integer. Next, here comes the clear list method, which clears the entry in the list box control. Then we start the loop by using the for keyword. This tells Visual Basic 2008 that we want to create a loop. Everything that follows the for keyword is used to define how the loop should act. In this case, we're giving it the variable we just created and then telling it to count from 1 to 5. The variable that we give the loop in this case, the int count, is known as the control variable. When you first enter the loop, Visual Basic 2008 sets the control variable to the initial count value, in this case, 1. After the loop starts, Visual Basic 2008 moves to the first line within the for loop and then adds a string to the list box. This time, this line of code adds I am item 1 in the list to the list box. Visual Basic 2008 then hits the next statement, and that's where things start to get interesting. When the next statement is executed, Visual Basic 2008 increments the control variable by 1. The first time next is executed, the value in int count changes from 1 to 2. Providing that the value of the control variable is less than or equal to the stop value, in this case 5, Visual Basic 2008 moves back to the first line after the for statement and adds the item to the list. This time, the line of code adds I am item 2 in the list to the list box. Again, after this line is executed, runs the next statement. The value of int count is now incremented from 2 to 3, and because 3 is less than or equal to 5, you move back to the line that adds the item to the list. This happens until int count is incremented from 5 to 6. As 6 is greater than the stop value for the loop, the loop stops. This method merely clears the item's collection of the list box. Do until loop. This kind of loop just keeps on going until some condition is true. For better understanding, let's create a loop that will keep on generating random numbers until it produces the number 10. And when that number 10 is reached, the loop will be terminated. Let's work with a sample program, shall we? Return to the same loop project. Add another button control to your form. And set its name property to btn do until loop and its text property to do until loop. Now double click the do until button control and paste this code in its click event. Now run the application by pressing F5. You will see results similar to this. Now keep clicking the button. You'll see that the number of elements in the list is different each time. Now then let's explore how it works. A do until loop keeps running the loop until the given condition is met. We begin by declaring a variable for the random class, which provides methods for generating random numbers. This object has been prefixed with obj to specify that this is an object derived from a class. The next variable that we declare is the int random number, and this variable is used to receive the random number generated by our obj random object. Then, we clear the list of any previous items that may have been added. Next off, we're setting up the loop and tell it that we want to keep running the loop until int random number is equal to 10. And we are signing it over here. With each iteration of the loop, we ask the random number generator for a new random number and store it in int random number. This is done by calling the next method of obj random to get a random number. In this case, we are passing 25 as a parameter to next, meaning that any number returned should be between 0 and 24, inclusive that is, that the number we supply must be one larger than the biggest number we ever want to get. Now the magic happens when we get into the loop statement. At this point, Visual Basic 2008 returns not to the first line within the loop, but instead to the do until line. When execution returns to do until, the expression is evaluated. Provided it returns false, the execution pointer moves to the first line within the loop. 
However, if int random number is 10, the expression returns true. And instead of moving to the first line within the loop, you continue at the first line immediately after the loop. In effect, the loop is stopped. Do while loop. The do while loop evaluates the condition, and if the condition is true, then it evaluates the statements following the condition. When it has finished doing this, it evaluates the condition again, and if the condition is true, it evaluates the statements again. It continues repeating this process until the condition is false. The syntax for the do while loop will look like this. Let's work with the sample. Return to the same loop project and add another button control to your form. And set its name property to btn do while loop and its text property to do while loop. Now, double click the do while button control and paste this code in its click event. Now, run the application by pressing our F5 key. In the result pane, click the do while control and output will be similar to this. Every time you press the button, the loop executes until the random number generator produces a number greater than or equal to 15. Now, let's discuss about how it works. A do while loop keeps running so long as the given expression remains true. As soon as the expression becomes false, the loop quits. Before starting the loop, we have to make sure that the int random number is less than 15. If it is, the expression returns true, and we can run the code within the loop. Again, when we get into the loop statement, Visual Basic 2008 moves back up to the do while statement. When it gets there, it evaluates the expression again. If it's true, we run the code inside the loop once more. Now then, if it's false, that means the int random number is greater than or equal to 15, and we continue with the first line after the loop, effectively quitting the loop.